In this video, we are going to start talking about free transform. Before we start talking about free transform, let's remember what we did in free series. In free series, we used to deal with periodic signals, and we saw that the exponential Fourier series we get this thing harmonics, one harmonic at the uh, zero, the DC harmonic, one harmonic at omega naught, two omega naught, three omega naught, same from the negative side. Now, in Fourier series, the signal in the time domain was periodic, and the frequency domain, the spectrum, was discrete. What happens when we move from periodic signals to aperiodic signals, to signals that are not periodic? In order to understand this, to get an intuition of what, what's going to happen with Fourier transform, which deals with aperiodic signals, let's find the relation between aperiodic signals and periodic signals. If we imagine that T0, the period of a periodic signal, is going to increase, what happens is that the period will be bigger. So if we increase T0, the period is going to be bigger. And what happens to omega naught? Omega naught, we know, it's 2 pi over T0. So omega naught, which is also the difference between the harmonics, the difference between the harmonics is omega naught, it's going to decrease. So the harmonics are going to come closer to each other. Right? So if we increase T naught, the period is going to increase in the time domain. And the harmonics are going to get closer to each other. What if T naught, what if T naught, the period, approaches infinity? If T naught goes to infinity, then omega node is going to approach zero. And if omega node approaches zero, this means that the difference between each harmonic and the next harmonic is going to be zero, which means that the spectrum is going to be continuous. And this is exactly what happens when we talk about aperiodic signals. Aperiodic signals basically when T node, the period of a periodic signal, goes to infinity, this will give us a periodic signal, a signal that doesn't repeat. Because the next repetition, the next period will be at infinity. So basically, the signal will not be repeated. And the harmonics will be continuous, which means that we are going to get a continuous spectrum. This is exactly what happens in Fourier transform. When we deal with aperiodic signals, with energy signals, the period can be considered to be infinity, and the spectrum will be continuous. When we talk about continuous spectrum, then any summation will be converted to an integration, right? So you expect that in Fourier transform, instead of having summations, which were used to express discrete harmonics, we'll get integrations. That's why the expressions of Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform can be written as follows. The frequency domain of the Fourier transform is defined as we have a signal called g of t. The Fourier transform, the frequency domain of this signal is defined as integration from minus infinity to infinity. g of t exponential minus j omega t dt. As we see here, the difference between this expression and the other expression is that here we have discrete harmonics. Here we have continuous variable omega because we said that the spectrum is going to be continuous when we talk about energy signals or aperiodic signals, right? The spectrum in omega is going to be continuous. That's why the frequency variable here, omega is continuous variable. Additionally, here we used to have, we used to divide over the period and we get the value of the harmonic, the amplitude of the harmonic. Here, actually this g, it's a multiplication between the amplitude of the harmonic times the period. Or in other words, it is a multiplication between the amplitude of the harmonic d divided by the frequency. Divided by the frequency, which is the same as the difference between two different harmonics. Okay? So g here, g here, it's not amplitude, it's called amplitude density. The amplitude density. Here it was amplitude. We say that this is volt. This is the amplitude of the second harmonic is two volt. But here we don't have something called amplitude. We have amplitude density, and later we have power spectral density. 
Why do you see? Because it's divided by the frequency. It's uh, the amplitude per hertz. It's the amplitude per hertz. Because now you are distributing the amplitude over continuous range. You're distributing the amplitude of your signal over, you're saying I'm applying the wave like this. You are distributing the amplitude over a continuous range of frequencies. So if you study the amplitude of a single frequency, you'll find it to be zero. Why? Because basically, you are uh, you are dividing you are dividing over you are dividing the amplitude over a continuous range over an infinity range of frequencies, right? So you will find that the amplitude of a single frequency is zero. But you have something called amplitude density, which you can use to calculate the amplitude in a range of frequencies. You can integrate this amplitude density over a certain range of frequencies. Huh? This is amplitude per hertz. This is amplitude per hertz. So if you integrate this over a range of frequencies, it will give you the amplitude of these frequencies, of this range of frequencies. Okay? So this is just a conceptual difference between the Fourier series and Fourier transform is the Fourier series gives you spectrum or spectrum of the signal, the amplitude of each harmonic. Here it doesn't give you the amplitude, it gives you the amplitude density. Here if you square it gives you the power of each harmonic. Here it will give you the energy spectral density, not the energy, it's the energy spectral density which is the energy per hertz. Okay? So this is the expression of Fourier transform. Of course, here in our course, we are going to do a very, very quick review of Fourier transform. For more detailed review, I advise you to go back to the videos of the E207 Signals and Systems course, which you will find on the same YouTube channel in another playlist. Okay? Here we are going to do a very, very quick review, assuming that you know these uh, things. So this is called the Fourier transform. We move from the time domain to the frequency domain. There is another equation called inverse Fourier transform, which moves you from the frequency domain to the time domain. So if you have the frequency domain, you can just integrate from minus infinity to infinity, g of omega, ex exponential g omega t, d omega, and then here we are going to divide over 2 pi in order to get g of t. We divide over 2 pi here because we use the omega, the radian per second. If you use f, if you use the frequency f in the expression, then you don't have to divide over 2 pi. So here if you use the function g of f, exponential j 2 pi ft df, then there is no 2 pi in the expression. You have to be good in using both f and omega. In our course, you have to be good in using both. And you expect that any expression that has d omega, any expression that has an integration with respect to omega, you expect that there will be a division by 2 pi. If you are doing the expression in terms of f, then you will not get the 2 pi. Let's get started with an example, a quick example. Example, if we want to find the Fourier transform of rect t over tau. So rect t over tau, it's a rect function, it looks like this. From minus tau over 2 to tau over 2, its amplitude is 1. This is the time domain. So we want to find the Fourier transform of this function, then we'll say that, let's call it g of t. We'll say that g of omega, it's applied expression, it's negative infinity to infinity integration, g of t, exponential minus g of omega t dt. But our g of t is zero everywhere except from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2, right? So the integration will be integration from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2. The value of our function is 1 here in this range, multiplied by exponential minus g omega t dt. If we integrate this, we get the same exponential and you divide over minus g omega. And then you substitute the limits of integration. Let's do that. Let's substitute the limits of integration. So this can be written as minus 1 over g omega. Here it will be exponential minus g omega tau over 2 minus exponential 
minus g omega multiplied by minus tau over 2 will be plus g omega tau over 2. Of course, we can include this negative sign inside and we reverse these two terms. So we can remove the negative sign from here and we can make this term positive and this term negative. We reverse the two terms. Okay? And then if we divide over 2 here and we multiply by 2 here, now we are getting close to the which expression, to the sign expression, right? So if we divide over 2 and multiply over 2, remaining now is we need j here. But we already have j here, so we can remove the j from here and put it here. Now we have we have this expression which is this is sine. This is sine. Sine what? Sine omega tau over 2. Multiplied by 2 over omega. But we know that. Let me remove this. But we know that sine of a variable divided by the variable, we can write it as a sine function, right? Do you remember the sine function? The sine function is defined as sine x is defined as sine x over x. And it looks like this with the x. It looks like this. It's one at the zero, okay? And then it goes to zero when the argument is pi or negative pi, two pi or negative two pi, and so on. This is the same function. So if you have sine the variable over the variable divided by the variable, this is probably a same function. So here we have sine omega tau over two, Divided over omega, the variable omega inside the sign, and the sign is divided by omega. So what we can do is we can write this as sine omega tau over two, and then two over omega can be written as omega over two in the denominator. Now we are getting close to the expression of the same. If we multiply by tau down and up, this will give us tau, and this is exactly the same omega tau over 2. So we will get a same function. We will get the same function. In, as a function of omega, its amplitude is tau. And then when does it reach to zeros? When does the function go to zeros? We said that when the argument inside, when omega tau over 2 is plus or minus n pi, plus or minus n pi. So when omega basically is plus or minus 2n pi over tau. So the first deal will be at 2 pi over tau. Second zero, 4 pi over tau. Here, minus 2 pi over tau minus 4 pi over 10. These zeros are very important because later the area between the first two zeros here, the first zero, the positive, first positive zero and the first negative zero, this area contains the most of the energy of the same function and can be considered as the essential bandwidth, can be considered as the essential bandwidth of the same function. So now we can write that rect T over tau, it has a Fourier transform, and this is how we write it, it has a Fourier transform of tau sin omega tau over 2. So this is an example of how to use the integration in order to calculate the Fourier transform of a, a certain function. We'll stop here in this video, and in the next video we'll discuss some of the properties of Fourier transform.